Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India last lecture we saw several examples of linear transformations. We shall now continue to study the structure of linear transformations. The answers to many of the questions that we raised lies in the study of the structure of a linear transformation. Let us now consider a vector space V and a vector space W both are vector spaces over a field F and recall that a transformation from V to W is called a linear transformation if it preserves the basic algebraic operations in the vector spaces. If it preserves addition T of x plus y is T of x plus t of y for every x y in V and it preserves scalar multiplication. T of alpha x is alpha t of x for every alpha in F and for every x in V. Such a linear transformation is going to hold the key for our studies on various questions that we raised. An important property that we observed a very simple but important property. So, let us note that a simple property of a linear transformation which we saw last time was that if we take theta v the 0 vector in the v space t always maps it to the 0 vector in the w space. So, a linear transformation always maps the 0 vector theta v in v to the 0 vector theta w in w. Okay. So, what does that mean? We have the vector space v and the vector space w and t is the transformation that is taking v vectors into w vectors. What the above property says is theta v is a vector in v and theta w is a vector in w, theta v the 0 vector in v, theta w is the 0 vector in w, t pulls along this 0 and then maps him to that 0. This is a typical property of linear transformations. Now, it may so happen that some other vector in V may also get pulled to the 0 vector. There may be another vector which get pulled to the 0 vector. In other words, there may be a lot of vectors in V which are all going to get focused towards theta w. So, all of them are going to be focused. Uh, towards theta w by this lens t. So, we collect all these vectors which are going to be focused to theta w. So, there may be several vectors in V that get mapped to the 0 vector in w in addition to the theta v which we already know gets mapped to the theta w. We collect all this, we collect all these vectors in v which get mapped to the 0 vector, which get mapped to the 0 vector under the map so, we denote this collection by n t. So, n t 
is the collection of all the vectors in V such that they get mapped to the 0 vector. Now clearly the first thing we observe is that N t is a collection of vectors from V having certain specific property. Therefore, a priori they are all vectors in V therefore, N t is a subset of V. And the second trivial thing that we know is that the 0 vector of V is certainly in N t because the 0 vector get maps to the 0 vector. 2 theta V belongs to N t since t of theta v equal to theta w and therefore, N t is a non empty subset non empty subset of v because there is at least one vector namely theta v which belongs to N t. Now, whenever we have a non empty subset of a vector space the natural question that we ask is whether that is a subspace. So, is N t a subspace of V? This always whenever there is a non empty subspace of a vector subset of a vector space we are always interested in knowing whether it is a subspace. In order to make sure that N t is a subspace we must make sure that N t is closed with respect to the two basic operations of the vector space. So, for this to happen N t must be closed with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. That is the major requirement for any subset to get qualified qualified as a subspace. So, let us verify whether N t is closed under these two operations. So, let us first check with addition. Suppose we have two vectors in N t, we want to know whether their sum will also be in N t. Now, all we know at present is that x y are in N t but N t the collection of all those vectors which are mapped to the 0 vector and therefore, T x must be 0 vector that means, x must be mapped to the 0 vector and T y must be the 0 vector because x and y are in N t and therefore, they are mapped to the 0 vector. That says I can add the 2 and I will get equal to theta w plus theta w the 0 vector plus the 0 vector is the 0 vector itself. Now, we know that t is a linear transformation therefore, t preserves addition and hence t of x plus y is the same as t of x plus y t x plus t y is the same as t of x plus y that says this is because t is linear t is a linear transformation we know t preserves addition. That says the vector x plus y is also getting mapped to the 0 vector and hence x plus y also belongs to N t. So, thus x and y belong to N t mean x plus y belong to N t hence N t. So, the whole thing implies N t is closed with respect to addition. The next thing we have to verify is whether N t is closed with respect to scalar multiplication. So, let us take a vector x in N t what does that mean? We want to verify that it is closed with respect to scalar multiplication that means, when we multiply x by any scalar the resulting vector must also be in N t. Now, first of all we are given x is in N t this means t carries x to the 0 vector that is the qualification for being in N t and if that is so for any scalar if I multiply both sides by alpha I get alpha theta w 
which is theta w when the 0 vector is multiplied by any scalar we get the 0 vector. Now since t is linear t of alpha x is the same as alpha of t x because t preserves scalar multiplication. So alpha t x is the same as t of alpha x since t is a linear transformation. So that says the vector alpha x is going to carry over to the 0 vector and hence alpha x qualifies to be in nt. So this says nt is closed under scalar multiplication. Therefore nt, so what are the various properties we observed? nt is so hence nt is first of all a non empty subset of V which is closed under addition and scalar multiplication and that makes it a subspace. So NT is a subspace of V. This subspace is called the null space of T. This subspace is called the null space, the vectors which get nullified, null space of T. So we have NT is called null space of T is the set of all vectors in V such that T x equal to theta w and this is a subspace of V. Shall make one simple observation. Suppose V is a finite dimensional vector space and T maps V to W and W is a vector space. We do not know whether it is finite or infinite dimensional space. So, it is some vector space and that is a linear transformation. T mapping V to W is a linear transformation. Now, N T is a subspace of V and V is a finite dimensional space. So, we observed that any subspace of a finite dimensional vector space must be finite dimensional and its dimension should, should be less than or equal to the dimension of the full space and hence we get N t is finite dimensional and dimension of N t is less than or equal to dimension of V because it is a part of V this dimension is called the nullity of t. This dimension n t is called nullity of t and is denoted by say nu of t. So, what do we have? Nu of t is dimension of n t where n t is the null space. So, the nullity of a linear transformation is just the dimension of the null space of t. So, now we have collected all the vectors which are focused to 0 and then we have studied them and we find that they form a subspace and that subspace is called the null space and its dimension is called the nullity. Now, let us look at again the transformation we have V, we have W and T transforms V vectors to W. Now we are say this is N T that means all the vectors here are focused to W. All the vectors in this portion 
are going to be focused to w the 0 vector in w. Now, if I take any vector that is not in n t it will now get focused to elsewhere this one may be focused somewhere. So, now therefore, we see theta w is one focal point and there may be other focal points that means, there will be other points in w where the image of a vector in v may come and fall. We collect all these focal points. So, we now look at the set R t which is the collection of all these focal points. These focal points will be in w, these are points in w, we are trying to see where they come and fall. These are points in w such that somebody comes and falls there, his image comes here under t that is there exists an x in v such that the image of x under t is y. So, y is a focal point for x then he is taken into R t. If y is not the focal point for anybody he is not going to be in R t. So, R t is the collection of all such y for which there is a pre image x such that t x equal to y. We also say that y the R t is the collection of all the values taken by the function t. t of x is the value of the function at the point x. So, y is the value of the function t at the point x we are collecting all the possible values that the function t takes. Now, clearly since this is a collection of vectors in w with certain specific property it is a subset of w r t is a subset of w. And we have already seen that theta v goes to theta w therefore, theta w is one of the values taken by t. So, theta w belongs to R t since theta v belongs to v and the value of t at theta v is precisely theta w. So, there is at least one point in R t therefore, R t is a non empty subset of w. So, that implies R t is a non empty subset of w. And as we look in the case of n t whenever we have a non empty subset of a vector space we are always interested in knowing whether it is a subspace. So, is R t a subspace of w, it can be a subspace of w because it is a subset of w. Once again in order to check whether it is a subspace of w or not there are two properties that we have to check whether it is closed under addition and whether it is closed under scalar multiplication. So, let us check whether it is closed under addition. So, suppose I take y 1 and y 2 in R t we want to know whether y 1 plus y 2 is also in R t. Now, first of all what does it mean to say that y 1 is in R t? y 1 is in R t means it is a focal point which means there is a pre image x 1 in V such that t of x 1 will be focused towards y 1 t of x 1 is y 1. Similarly, y 2 is in R t means there exists an x 2 in V such that t of x 2 is y 2 which implies there exists x 1 x 2 in V such that t of x 1 plus t of x 2 is y 1 plus y 2. Now, since t is linear t of x 1 plus t of x 2 is t of x 1 plus x 2. So, this means there exists x 1 x 2 in V such that t of x 1 plus x 2 
is equal to y1 plus y2 since t is linear. You see is a Taylor transformation t of x1 plus x2 is the same as t of x1 plus t of x2. Now, if we call x1 plus x2 as z, then since x1 is in v, x2 is in v, x1 plus x2 will also be in v because v is a vector space. So, there exists z which is equal to x1 plus x2 in v such that t of z is y1 plus y2. This means y1 plus y2 is also a focal point with z being focused at y1 plus y2. That is the value of t at the vector z is y1 plus y2. So, y1 plus y2 is a value taken by t therefore, y1 plus y2 also belongs to R t. So, if y1 and y2 are in R t, y1 plus y2 is also in R t which means R t is closed under addition. The other thing that we have to check whether R t is a subspace or not is to see whether R t is closed under scalar multiplication. So, take a vector y let us uh, say so take a vector y in R t we want to know whether alpha y will also be in R t. If y is in R t that means y is the value taken by t at a point x that means there exists an x in v such that t x equal to v t x equal to y. If t x equal to y if we multiply by alpha alpha t x will be equal to alpha y for every alpha in f. Once again since t is linear alpha of t x will be t of alpha x. So, there exists a vector x in v such that t of alpha x is equal to alpha y. Now, if we call alpha x as z. So, since x is in v alpha is a scalar and v is a vector space therefore, it is closed under scalar multiplication. So, z equal to alpha x will belong to v such that t of z is alpha y. That means, alpha y is the value of t at the vector z or it is a focal point for the vector z and hence alpha y must also belong to r t. So, that says r t is closed under scalar multiplication. Thus, we have R t is a non empty subset of W, which is closed under addition and scalar multiplication which means R t is a subspace of W. So, R t is a non empty subset of W which is closed under addition and scalar multiplication and hence R t is a subspace of W this subspace is called range of t. So, the range of t which is denoted by r t is equal to all those y's in w such that there exists an x in v whose image under t is y and this is a subspace of w.
if w is a finite dimensional vector space then r t being a subspace of this finite dimensional subspace w will also be finite dimensional will also be finite dimensional and since it is a subspace of w dimension of w will be less than or I am sorry dimension of r t will be less than or equal to dimension of w. This dimension is then called the rank of t this dimension is called rank of t and is denoted by rho t. So, rho t is just the dimension of range of t by definition and rho of t will be less than or equal to dimension of w. So, suppose now we have v finite dimensional say dimension of v is n and say w finite dimensional dimension of w equal to m and t is a linear transformation. So, I have two finite dimensional spaces and I have a linear transformation t from v to w. Now, we have seen one subspace of v which is connected with t namely the n t and we have seen one subspace of w which is connected with t namely range of t and this n of t is a finite dimensional subspace of v and its dimension is called nullity and that is denoted by nu t. So, dimension its dimension is nu t and here the dimension is rho t and this dimension is smaller than or equal to n and this dimension is smaller than or equal to m. So, nu of t is less than or equal to n and rho of t is less than or equal to m. So, we have two important subspaces associated with a linear transformation t. As we go along we will see a lot of subspaces that are connected with a linear transformation and these subspaces come into play in the analysis of the structure of a linear transformation. Let us look at some examples. Consider V to be F n where F is a field W to be F m where F is a field. So, from n component vectors or the n uh, column vector with n entries to the column vectors with m entries. Now, we have a transformation how did we define a transformation from v to w in the last lecture we saw any m by n matrix will generate a transformation a linear transformation from f n to f m. So, let us now consider a fixed matrix in so a fixed matrix. So, consider a fixed m by n matrix with the entries in f. Then we defined a linear transformation T a from f n to f m as T a takes any vector x to the vector a times x and since a is m by n and x is n by 1 the result will be m by 1 and therefore, it will be in f m. We have already seen in the last lecture that this is a linear transformation from f n to f m. So, we have seen that T a is a linear transformation from f n to f m. Now, once we have a linear transformation we want to know what is its null space 
what is its dimension, what is the range space and what is the dimension. So, let us look at the null space of T A. So, in order to find the null space of T A, we want to find all those vectors which get mapped to the 0 vectors. So, x in V belongs to the null space of T if and only if somebody gets qualified to be in N T if and only if it gets carried to the 0 vector. So, if and only if T x is theta w, but then the definition I should put T A. The definition of T A is that T A of x is A times x. So, the image of any vector is obtained by pre multiplying it by the matrix A. So, therefore, T A of x is A of x equal to theta w. What is theta w? It is theta m because w is f m. So, this is simply the homogeneous system of equations A x equal to theta m and the solutions of this is what is known as the null space of the matrix A. Okay. So, if and only if x belongs to the null space of the matrix A that is the set of all solutions of the homogeneous system A x equal to theta. So, the null space of T is the same as the null space of A. For example, if we take m equal to 2, n equal to 3 and consider f 2 to f 3 to be our V and f 2 to be our W, we have to look for a matrix in m by n f m by n. So, remember we want to when you go from n component m component we need a matrix which is m by n. In this case we have m is 2 and n is 3. So, we will we have to take a matrix which is 2 by 3. So, let us say 1 0 minus 1 0 1 minus 1. Then the transformation T A is T A of x. Now, x is in F 3 will be A times x. Since x is in F 3, A is in uh, 2 by 3, the result will be in 2 by 1 and therefore, it will be in F 2. Now, what is the null space of T A? It must be equal to the null space of A. Now, what is the null space of A? The set of all x in F m such that A x equal to theta m. Now, what is A x? A is this matrix. I do not know what x is. x must be in F 3. So, it must have 3 components which means 1 0 minus 1 0 my 1 minus 1 into x 1 x 2 x 3 is equal to theta 2. Now, the matrix A is already in row reduced echelon form and therefore, we can write down the solution by inspection by eliminating 2 of the pivotal variables. There are 2 pivotal variables x 1 and x 2 and the non pivotal variable is x 3 and we can eliminate x 1 and x 2 in terms of x 3. We get x 1 equal to x 3, x 2 equal to x 3 and therefore, the null space of A consists of all vectors for which x 3 can be chosen arbitrarily the non pivotal variable. Once you choose the non pivotal variable the pivotal variables have to be chosen to be equal to that and alpha can be chosen arbitrarily. And we have therefore, n t also equal to this because n t is equal to n a. Now, what is the dimension of n t? since the vector 1 1 1 is a basis for n t now n t is the same as n a I should write n t a and since the basis has exactly one vector and the number of vectors in a basis called dimension we get dimension of n t is 1 
and this dimension is called nullity therefore the nullity of t a which is nu t is 1. Now let us find the range of t a for this same transformation. First let us look at the general matrix and then look at this example. So once again we look at f n to be v w to be f m and we take a fixed matrix in m n and we look at the linear transformation which takes the vector x to a of x. Now we want to find the range of T a. What does this range of T a mean? We want to know the vectors which are all focused by the vectors in x. So we want to look at the range of T a, the set of all y in f m that is the w such that there exists an x in v, v in this case is f n such that T a x is equal to y. This means we are looking at there exists an x in f n such that but now again T a of x is multiplying the vector x by the matrix. But this means we are looking at all those y for which the non-homogeneous system has a solution. So this is the set of all y in f m such that the non-homogeneous system a x equal to y has a solution and this is what we call as the range of the matrix A. and the dimension of this is called the rank of A. So, the dimension of R T A is the same as dimension of range A is called the rank of A and it is also because the dimension of the range of T A it is the rank of T A. Then let us go back to that example 1 0 minus 1 0 1 minus 1 mapping f then we have T a mapping f 3 to f 2 where T a of x is a x. We have already found the null space of this matrix we shall now found, find the range of this matrix. So now we want to know for what y's a x equal to y has a solution. So look, look at the non-homogeneous system a x equal to y. That means A x is x 1 minus x 3, x 2 minus x 3 that is what A x is. If you take a vector x 1, x 2, x 3 and pre multiplied by the matrix A you get this and we want this to be equal to y 1 and y 2. We want to know for what y 1 and y 2 will this system have a solution. We see that whatever whatever y1, y2 we choose in f, the system has a solution x1 equal to y1, x2 equal to y2, x3 equal to 0 because a into x1, x2, 0 I am sorry, y 1, y 2, 0 is precisely equal to y 1, y 2 and therefore given any y 1, y 2 we are able to construct a solution therefore every y in F 2 belongs to R t and therefore R t is all of F and hence or T A or T A therefore rank of T A which is rho T A is 2. So thus we have a very simple example of a linear transformation from 
f 2 to f 3 f 3 to f 2 for which we have found the null space and the range. Let us now look at another example. Let us consider V to be the collection of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 4 with coefficients from f. We will now look at a linear operator that is a linear transformation from V to V defined as d of any p is d p by d x the differentiation operator. We had seen in the last lecture that this is a linear transformation or a linear operator. We have seen d is a linear operator on f 4 x or v now is f 4 x. So, let us find the null space and the range of this operator. So, let us find null space of d. So, we want to find those vectors in v which get mapped to the 0 vector under the transformation d. Now, vectors are all polynomials because our vector space is the space of all polynomials. So, we want to find all those polynomials which when differentiated gives me the 0 polynomial go to 0 vector 0 vector is the 0 polynomial. So, x belongs to the null space of d if and only if d x is the 0 polynomial that is if and only if uh, let us uh, use the notation p because we have polynomials. So, d p equal to 0. Now, d p by definition is d p by d x that must be equal to 0 that is how the transformation d is defined the transformation d is the differentiation transformation. So, d p by d x equal to 0 the derivative is 0 if and only if p is a constant. So, therefore, only the constant polynomials qualify to be in the null space of D. So, thus we get the null space of D is the set of all polynomials in the vector space which are of the form p equal to some constant a naught, a naught belongs to f. So, they are all constant polynomials. Now, what is a basis for this space? Well, the constant polynomial 1 is a basis for this space. So, p equal to 1 is a basis for n d because everybody else is a multiple linear combination a naught times p will get all the vectors in n d and therefore, dimension of n d is equal to 1 because we have a basis consisting of one vector and since the dimension of the null space is 1 the nullity of d is 1. So, thus we have found the null space of this differentiation operator on f 4 x and the nullity. Now, let us look at the range of d. So, to find the range of d we want to find all polynomials p in f 4 x. Remember now we are looking at d as a linear operator on v. So, even the w space is now v. So, the w space is also v 4 x. So, we are looking at all those p in f 4 x for which we can find a pre image. What does that mean? we can find a q which is also in that same space because a linear operator such that the image of q is equal to p. So, we want to find all those p's which can be obtained at the image of a q in f 4 which means we want d q d x must be equal to 
So, we would like to find those p's for which d q d x will be equal to p, then q must be equal to integral 0 to x p x d x. But then if you take any polynomial of degree 4, the integral will become a polynomial of degree 5. And therefore, in order that q belongs to we want q to belong to f 4 x. So, in order that q is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 4, p must be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3. So, only polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3 have a pre image. So, in order that q belongs to f 4 x, it is necessary that p belongs to f 3 x, it is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3. Hence, the range of d is the set of all polynomials in f 4 x such that p belongs to only the f 3 x. They are of the form p is equal to a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x squared plus a 3 x cube where all the ages are in f. So, R d consists of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. Now, what is the dimension of R d? <coughs> we have seen that 1 x x squared x cube form a basis and therefore, the dimension is 4 and therefore, rank d which is rho d is equal to we will see one more example similar to the one above take v equal to f 4 x and then say w equal to f 3 x and then consider the transformation d uh, let us call it as t because d we use for differentiation t mapping v to w defined as t of p is the second derivative of p. Now, again in the last lecture we verified that this is a linear transformation from b to w. So, t is a linear transformation from v to w. The once we have the linear transformation we want to find its null space and the range. So, let us find the null space of T. Now, the null space of T is all those vectors which get focused to the 0 vector and vectors here are all polynomials. So, P belongs to the null space of T if and only if it gets focused to the 0 polynomial or its value under T is the 0 polynomial if and only if t is defined as d squared. So, it is d squared p by d x squared is 0 this means p x is a linear polynomial a naught plus a 1 x where a naught and a 1 belong to f. Therefore, only linear polynomials qualify to be in the null space of so, therefore, we get null space of T consists of all those polynomials in f 4 x which are of the form p x equal to a naught plus a 1 x a naught a 1 in f. Now, clearly p 1 equal to 1 p 2 equal to x is a basis for n T because as is seen here every other polynomial is a linear combination of the polynomial 1 and the polynomial x and therefore, they form a spanning set and they are obviously linearly independent and therefore, they form a basis. So, the dimension of n t since a basis consists of two vectors now the dimension of n t is t 2. 
So, the nullity is this dimension is 2 which implies the nullity of t which is defined to be the dimension of n t is 2. Let us now look at the range. The range of t we want to find all polynomials p in now the w space is f 3 x our w space in this case is f 3 x. So, we want to find all those polynomials in f 3 x that means polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3. We want to find all those polynomials for which there is a pre image for which there exists a q pre image must be from v v is f 4 x in our case. Therefore, q belonging to f 4 x such that t q equal to p. If we want t q to be equal to p since t is defined as d squared q by d x squared we want to find those p's in f 3 x for which we can find a q in f 4 x so that d squared q is equal to d x square. Now, if q has to be in f 4 x, if q has to be in f 4 x it is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 4 and so when we differentiate it twice it will lose 2 degrees every derivative reduces the power by 1 in the polynomial degree by 1 in the polynomial. So, if you take any polynomial in f 4 x and differentiate it twice on the left hand side we will get only polynomials of degree 2 or less and therefore, p has to be a polynomial of degree 2 or less. Okay. Since q belongs to f 4 x we have d squared q d x squared belongs to f 2 x it has to be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 and hence p has to be in f 2 x. So, we know that if at all there is going to be a solution for this you we better start with p which is in f 2 x, but then for every p in f 2 x if we define p q to be integral 0 to x integral 0 to x p x d x d x then since p is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 when I integrate it will be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 3 and if I integrate further I will get a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 4. So, q will be in f 4 x and if we differentiate that is d of q will be precisely p and hence p will belong to range of d. Therefore, range of d is precisely f 2 x. What we are shown is you take any <coughs> vector in, in f 2 x it is in the range and previously we showed that if it has to be in the range it has to be in f 2 x and therefore, f 2 x is precisely the range of f d. So, the range of d is f 2 x and, and therefore, the dimension of r d is dimension of f 2 which is 3 because 1 x x squared form a basis for all polynomials whose degree is less than or equal to 3 less than or equal to 2 and therefore, the rank of d is 3. So, these are some simple examples of looking at the range and the null space. Now, what we have so far is here is the vector space V, here is the vector space W and the dimension of V is equal to n say dimension of W equal to m say and there is a linear transformation T 
and then a part of this is what is known as the null space of T and a part of this is what is known as the range of T and the dimension of n of T is what is known as nu of T and the dimension of rho of uh, r of T is what is known as rho of T and since null space of T is a part of V we have nu T is less than or equal to n similarly we have rho T is less than or equal to n. Now we have one subspace on V which comes from T we have one subspace on W which comes from T is there a connection between these two and there is a connection between their dimensions and that is what is known as the rank, rank nullity theorem. We shall first state this and we will look up proof of this in the next lecture. Now what is the statement? Let us look at the three examples we had in each of these examples if you see the first example. So, let us even take the last example we have that n is 5 in this case because f 4 m is 3. So, n is 5 nullity was 2 and rank was 3 and the rank plus nullity came out to be in this example we got rank d plus nullity d was equal to 2 plus 3 which is 5 which is equal to the dimension of v. And now this is not an accident and the fact that this is not an accident and this is always true for linear transformations is known as the rank nullity theorem which we will look at in the next class. Mm -hmm.